See, it asks me what my workspace is as soon as I open. All right, so here you will put your flash drive. And there is Eclipse. So, that is just the interface. However, there's not really any projects I have running the program. So you need to create a project first in order to create your first program. Everything is on the project. If you are using NetBeans, NetBeans is going to ask for something called a namespace. It's basically, what's your project name? In case you got multiple projects going. So, I'm going to hit new. I right click on the package explorer on the left side. I can click on new Java project. So, why do you want to call your first project? I don't know. My first project. And notice. I like to use proper casing, which means every first word is capitalized and everything else is lowercase and there's no spaces. That's just my preference. And I won't change anything else. I click finish. Or right, is my project. I have a folder where all my classes are going to go to. I am going to write one class pro project right now, which I will do for the first few weeks in the semester. And if I expand this, you see these two things, source, and let me open Windows Explorer. And let me show you something. So I will see, and I think it was this one, right? Here's my first project folder. You created a folder for me. And there are two, well, there's three folders and a couple more things. So, what do you think this folder SRC means? It's the same thing here. Mm -hmm. That means source. So, you're going to write source code. What do you think this folder is? Sure, for binary. The bin folder. That's where your Java bytecode goes, the compile version. So the computer is going to organize them for you. When he, you write stuff, it's going to save it in your source code, and when you run it, you have to combine and compile it into a Java byte so Java bytecode, and then the Java virtual machine runs and reads the Java bytecode and executes the program. That goes in the binary. So. I need to create my first class. So I can click here, new, or this drop down. I click new class. And this shows up. Now I gotta give it a name. my class or my first class, whatever you want to call it. We call it my class here. Don't worry about modifiers right now. C is selected to public because they will have this for public here. And notice this. Well, which method stops? Stop means from here to here. We would like to create. I can have it create my public static void main, which I had there. If you don't make it, you have to type it yourself. So notice, I put it has the parameters as strings, square brackets. We're going to talk about those in chapter seven, and then it says args. I wrote it here: string, args, and then the square brackets. Doesn't matter. 
square brackets can go before or after variables, but we'll talk about those when we talk about arrays, okay? So if I don't change anything, I don't even check that box, it gave me that. Public class, my class. Oh, I forgot to check that. Well, then you have to type it. So it will be public static void main string arguments. So Eclipse has public class, public static void in that purple, and my in the board I wrote it as blue. If you use NetBeans, will be blue. It doesn't matter. Why do you think they're different colors? Any idea? Because those words mean something for Java. We call it reserved keywords. So can I, we created a variable called x, right? Do you think I can create a variable called public? No, because public means something for Java. So that's why they're different colors. So, I had it like that in x, and then x equals five, whatever you want it to be. And then I did system dot out. See when I start typing? So well, this comes up. And I said, hello world. I can have another one. I have X here. And that's it. I created my first program. It doesn't do anything. Do you tell it to do something? It's like your calculator. It's, it has a sign function, a cosine function, but until you press that button, it doesn't gonna, it's not gonna run, right? How do I make this run? Well, see that green VCR button right here? It says run. So this program that I created is a console application, it's a command prompt application. So it's going to run in as a command prompt. So I click run. Do you want to save? Yes, I didn't save it. And there, look at this, at the bottom. I print two lines, one that says hello world and the other has the value of x, which is so notice something here that's important. What did I name my class? I call it my class, right? It says public class, my class. But look at the top of the tab. It says my class dot Java. So one of the requirements in Java is that the class has to match the file name. So every source code file has a Java extension. You know what extension is? Like if you have a take a picture, it will be JPG or that's a file extension. If you have a Word document, it will be DOCX. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the extension, but this is a Java extension. So, did I close the explorer? It looks like I did. So, If I go here, if I go to my source code, there is my, my class.java. If I go to the binary, there is my class.class. So the dot .java is the source code, and the dot .class is the Java bytecode, that the compile version.
So if you don't put the semi-columns in the correct spot or the curly brackets, it's not going to work. It has to look exactly like that. And that's what I was emphasizing in the boxes. And we're going to talk about this uh, methods. We're going to create our own methods, and then you're going to see that one box is independent from the other. Yeah. Are you always going to want to put spaces between like the parentheses and the brackets, or like the x equals five? It yeah. does it automatically. So, do you think the program is going to run different if I do this? Run it. So it runs. So that's called indentation. And the indentation does not affect how the program runs. The indentation's purpose is easier to read for the programmer. It was like this. And notice the class is at the beginning of the line, but then one tab is this method, one tab more is inside that method. And if I have other stuff inside, will be another tab. If you hit the tab key, it will be moved over automatically. It's just for ease to read. And notice everything has a semicolon at the end, which indicates end of instruction. Or a statement, I should say, because there are many instructions in one. It could be, 